Welcome to Mystery Warning. I'm John, and this is Don't Look Back. We're back with the asymmetrical Survivors vs Killer horror skirmish game by Blacksight Studios. This time, however, the dangers facing the Survivors is a little bit different. This video's plot is called Where's Pat? The Survivors have been staying at a cabin in the woods, but they can't find their friend Pat. After a search of the surrounding forest, they come back to the cabin, but something feels off. They swear they can hear someone humming in the distance. Time to find Pat and get out of there. The four survivors for this game are a mix of the previous episodes and the remaining two from the start set. First up are our returning protagonists, Max the Abs, still with his baseball bat, and Seth Newton, the hopeless nerd with a flashlight. Joining them are Holden Gibson, a tough guy armed with a shotgun, and Ranger Sandy, who responded to the other's call for help. She's armed with a service pistol. The killer for this game is rather different to the last videos. She is a mundane killer, which means that she isn't as resilient as the last killer, but she does have her throwing hatchets. Her MO is stalking, hanging back and picking off those who get too far from safety. Her traits are patient, she knows who she wants to hunt and will ignore the supporting characters. Her other trait is whispers, she hums a disturbing lullaby that messes with the survivors heads, making it harder for them to pass checks when they're close to her. This is the board setup. The survivors start in this corner and must check the points of interest tokens spread throughout the map until they find Pat, or whatever's left of him. Once the survivors know Pat's fate, three of the survivors, not including Pat, need to get off the board edges in the corner that they started in before the end of turn 14. Turn 1 is a very quiet affair. The fright tokens don't do anything, and the survivors, not aware of the danger they're in, are able to move fast without the fear of tripping over. Turn 2 sees the tension building. Two of the fright tokens move towards the survivors. while the one in the cabin is removed. Seth decides to try and remove the nearest token by using the It's Nothing C action. However, it backfires and the token moves closer. This means Holden gains a terror token for beginning his turn within 4 inches of a fright token. He moves twice, tripping over is very unlikely this early. Max makes a similar move and uses his baby blues free action to move Sally towards him. This lets Sally take a crack at the It's Nothing C, but it also does nothing. Turn 3 and the Fright Tokens remain still for now. Holden moves towards the nearest point of interest, and uses the Concentrate action to give himself a bonus next turn. Sally tries to remove the Fright Token again, but fails on a 15. She uses her one of her limited luck points to re-roll the die, succeeding. A bit of luck, the token is removed. This lets Seth move twice without gaining any terror, and so avoids the risk of tripping. Max 
chooses his baby blues again to make sure Sally keeps up before moving himself. Turn 4 and the last fright token moves a bit closer. Holden performs the investigate action. He succeeds, but this isn't Pat. It's a set of keys. Not great, but will help getting into the cabin later. Sally moves towards the next point of interest. The nearby woods causes a jump scare. Resulting in a tap on the shoulder result. It's Max. He's right behind her. This lets Max take a breath, removing a point of terror. It's turn 5, over a third of the way through the game without the killer being present. She must be patient indeed. The remaining fright token is removed, which spawns two new ones. One of which is right on top of Max, Sally and Holden. Max gains a point of terror and moves away. The jump scare does nothing, as there are no lights to switch on or off. Max finishes his turn by using the encourage action, giving Sally a bonus to her next action, which is to investigate the point of interest. But it was nothing. Holden heads towards the cabin, thankfully without tripping over. Seth also moves twice, no danger of tripping yet. Turn 6 begins and from now on the fright tokens will always be rolled for. One moves, the other is removed. Holden rushes to the cabin without tripping. Max does the same. But this run of luck is about to change as Sally moves twice. Tripping over and triggering a jump scare. The jump scare is the absolute worst result, a lunge. The killer is spawned, ignoring their regular MO and jumps out at Sally and immediately attacks. As Sally's tripped over, she takes an extra point of damage too. Lastly, Seth moves twice the jump scare result making him test to see if he trips over, which he doesn't. Turn 7 and the danger is now revealed. Additionally, the survivors place a supporting character in the corner that they started in. The fright tokens are respawned. The supporting character would have been a valuable distraction, but the killer passes their test to ignore them. She throws a hatchet at Max, which deals 3 damage. Before using her axe to attack Sally, who takes another 3 damage. Sally can only stand up and stumble away. A short move which allows her to get out of contact with the killer, but carries the risk of tripping over. Holden puts off search in the cabin and fires his shotgun at the killer. A critical hit. The shotgun does D5 damage. A 2 means it does 1 damage, but the critical adds 2 more damage on top of that. Max is close, but not close enough to use his baseball bat. Instead, he uses the fend off action. A very small chance to instantly drive off the killer. 
but it doesn't work. Finally, Seth investigates the well and finds Pat alive. Turn 8 sees both fright tokens move, but more importantly, it sees the survivor's objective change. Now they have to retreat back to the corner they started in. The killer, however, charges at Sally, but misses her hatchet throw but hits her for two mortal damage with her axe. <laughs> Sally stumbles away again, without tripping. Holden fires another shot, this time doing 4 damage to the killer. Max uses his baby blues to get Sally close to him and out of danger, then he misses a basic ranged attack at the killer. Finally he uses the let me take a look action and heals Sally for 2 points. Turn 9 sees the first Fright Token cause the killer to redeploy, blocking Seth's path. Seth isn't armed with a shotgun, so that might be why. However, this move means the killer isn't able to attack this turn. This gives Max some time, so he heals Sally more, before moving him and Sally towards Seth. Sally takes a breath and heals herself. Holden takes his time and reloads his shotgun. Seth stumbles away from the killer but unfortunately trips and takes a point of damage. But he's also able to stand up afterwards. Turn 10 and both fright tokens move. The killer charges at Seth but misses her axe attack. Seth stumbles away again and trips again. But he uses his luck to re-roll the result. He then uses his flashlight to illuminate the ground beneath him. Max moves in to help, the jump scare doing nothing but make him laugh, removing a point of terror. Again he uses his baby blues on Sally. This gets Sally into position, and she fires her service pistol at the killer, doing two more damage. One more and the killer is driven off, temporarily. Finally Holden finishes reloading his shotgun. Turn 11 and the killer moves in, but cannot charge Seth because the light protects him. Sally uses the encourage action on Max, before using the distract action on the killer, drawing her into base contact with both her and Max. 
This lets Max take a swing with his baseball bat, doing more than enough damage to drive off the killer. She is replaced with a fright token, and each survivor removes one point of terror. Holden moves up to Max and Sally. While Seth tries and fails to remove the fright token. Turn 12 is peaceful. Driving off the killer gives the survivors a turn of respite. The luck continues as two of the fright tokens are also removed. Seth again fails to remove the last token, but moves towards the board edge with Pat. Holden moves into the light, removing one terror, but also fails to remove the token. Max moves into the light too, removing one terror, and he takes a breath to heal himself. And uses his baby blues to bring Sally into the light. Sally concentrates and then fails to remove the token. The second to last turn now, and the killer is back, skirting the edge of the fading light. <laughs> Seth is having none of it, and leaves the table with Pat. If two more can leave the board edge, then they win. Max and Sally know this, and they sprint towards safety. Thankfully, neither trip. Holden, however, decides to put a stop to this hunt, and fires at the killer. Not only does the shot hit, but it also does 5 damage. Another shot like that, and she'll be driven off again. For the last turn, the killer charges at Holden. And between the hatchet and the axe, he takes 5 damage. However, in a last ditch move, Holden tries the fend off action. And he scores a 1. The killer is immediately driven off. This means Sally and Max can move off the table in peace, scoring the win for the survivors. This game felt very different to the last game of Don't Look Back. In the first game, the killer was relentless, but he seemed to struggle to put anyone down, besides Seth. This time the killer was able to throw damage around. If she appeared any earlier, I feel like the survivors would have been in big trouble. In part, I think this is because the killer's hatchet ranged attack can only be used against survivors armed with a weapon, which three of the four survivors were. It's also a shame the cabin wasn't really used. Maybe another time. Anyway, that was another fun game of Don't Look Back. If you've been following my Instagram page, you'll hopefully have seen that I've got a bunch more killer models to try out, with more on the way. Links to where to find the models and terrain, as well as links to my socials, are all in the description. Thank you very much for watching, take care.